Hi everybody! Welcome to the second week of the Nerdfighter Book Club. This week we are discussing the second half of the before section in Looking for Alaska. I'm in my parents' house right now and so I thought it would be fun to make a video in the library since, you know, we talk about books on this channel. Yeah, my parents put a library in their house. We really, really like books in my family. should probably start out with a warning that beyond this point, there will be spoilers. The first part of the book, the videos that we did last week, there weren't really that many spoilers in them. We talked a lot about the structure and about what the characters are like and that kind of thing. But from here on out, we cannot talk about this book without having lots of spoilers. So consider yourself warned. So today I want to talk about the scene. Looking for Alaska was the first YA book to be published with an oral sex scene. And it's one of the reasons that people try to ban this book all the time from being available in libraries and being read in schools. People don't understand the purpose of the scene. I guess some people think that John is just out to like corrupt the youth of America or whatever. As he has said many times before, he is not a pornographer. The oral sex scene in the book is between Pudge and Laura and they have this weird relationship where they're just kind of dating because Alaska thinks that they should be dating. Like, they like each other a little bit, but not anywhere close to the way that Pudge likes Alaska, and obviously if Pudge is so in love with Alaska, he probably really shouldn't be dating Laura, because that's not fair to her. So when the scene starts out, Pudge and Laura really don't know what they're doing, and they just kind of sit there and try to figure it out, and they don't know what they're supposed to do. So what do they do? Of course they go and ask Alaska. And Alaska explains to them how it's supposed to be done, then they go back to Lara's room and she gives him oral sex and it just is described. It's not described in detail. Pudge, as the narrator, just kind of sums up what happens and says, you know, she did it and it felt good and that's the end of it. And there's nothing exciting and nothing emotional or romantic about that scene at all. The whole scene is just strange and awkward and it makes you feel really awkward as a reader, which is the point. Later that evening, Pudge is in Alaska's room with the Colonel, and the Colonel and Alaska are drinking. Alaska's pretty drunk, and she dares Pudge to hook up with her. And so they start kissing, and they start making out. And the language that Pudge, as the narrator, uses to describe that is beautiful. It engages the reader. It's descriptive. It's flowing. It's romantic. It's very emotional. There's an emotional connection there between Pudge and Alaska. Even Alaska's there emotionally, even though she swears that she loves her boyfriend and she doesn't want to cheat on him. And that's what John wants people, particularly teenagers, to see, is that Pudge has this weird, kind of awkward, emotionally unattached relationship with Lara, the girl who is, you know, by rights, his girlfriend, but he's not there, he's not in it. Maybe Lara's in it, but there's certainly no real connection there. And so even though, you know, they're willing to try sexual things, it's not romantic and it's not what you think of as, you know, a nice, happy, attached romantic relationship. And then when Pudge is making out with Alaska, they're not dating. Alaska has a boyfriend, but there's this connection there. They're, they're in the moment emotionally. They really want to be with each other. And so it really makes a big difference and you see how much you need emotional intimacy in order to make physical intimacy worth anything. So really, if you understand John's point in writing those two separate scenes, anybody who wants to ban Looking for Alaska because of the crazy idea that John is like trying to corrupt the youth of the world or whatever is ridiculous. Clearly John is trying to show young people that physical intimacy, just for its own sake, is not worth very much. It's much better to be emotionally attached and in an emotionally healthy relationship than it is to just have sex because, you know, it feels good or whatever. So those are my thoughts on our section of the book today. I'm looking forward to hearing Elisa's thoughts tomorrow and everybody else's this week. If you are not on our channel, please leave us uh, a comment or a video response. We would love to really get some discussion going and you know, get this out to a broader audience because discussions are more fun with more people. I hope you all are having a good day and I'll see you later.